Does existence precede essence? How do we live and find meaning in a world of absurdity? Besides our increasing years, what accrues to us as we age? Is our physical being inseparable from our soul? What's the purpose of art? These are the kinds of questions you are forced to ponder as you look at Joe Giordano's existential self-portrait. Yeah, I'm Joe Giordano. I have three pieces in the show. One of the pieces is something I started in 2002 when I was turning 60. I'm 72 now. I wanted to make a piece that was going to be my birthday piece. And I wanted to make it really objective. No flattering with all the flaws and everything. It's called the existential self-portrait. Twelve years later, I'm on my 95th self-portrait painted on top of one another. I'll paint it till I get a self-portrait and then I paint over the self-portrait and paint over the self-portrait. And it's gotten to be a really interesting thing because now I, I'm always trying to find out where I want to go with it. Where it takes me because it's taken me now more than I'm taking it. I first started out trying to be very objective. And then I realized that I couldn't be objective, and I started giving in to subjectivity. But while I was being objective, I would do a painting, and I said, you know what, and I'll photograph it where I thought I came to a self-portrait. I started doing that where I felt a self-portrait, but that led me to different ideas about what a self-portrait might be. So then I waited for it to wink at me, what was going on in the painting, saying, well, you know, you have it. The next brushstroke, you lose it completely. So some of them are very muddy and very, very abstract, and some of them I'm really desperately trying to get a true image. But it's gotten so irregular to surface where I'm trying to paint something convex over top of a concave part of the canvas. It's controlling what I'm doing at that point. So right now, so it's a whole world in itself. It's different than other paintings I do in reality because it's so difficult to control. Essence precedes existence. In classical philosophy, as well as in the Judeo-Christian tradition, the meaning of your life exists before you are even born. Call it God. This essence precedes you. But existentialists believe there is no God, no ground for existence or meaning in your life other than what you create for yourself. Existence precedes essence. This painting of Joe's, with its layers upon layers of searching, seems to me a perfect metaphor for the existential quest to find meaning in one's existence. There's a story, the portrait of Dorian Gray, and the painting gets older, you do not look 72. Is there possibly some magic going on? Is the painting absorbing your elderliness? I think the, the painting absorbing everything. <laughs> I'm totally absorbed in the painting. It's a little bit like obsessive. Some people think it is. I always worked in series. So in a way, this is a series. I don't see an end to it. I really want to see where it takes me. Each time I paint it, there's a whole new direction that it's taking me to, and who knows. But it's also a little bit like those sand paintings the monks of Nepal do, and they leave them up and then they destroy them, because yeah. the underpaintings, they're still there, but you can't see them exactly. Yeah, the underpaintings are still there, and they have a, a great force in the painting. They obviously contribute to the next painting, because the marks of the underpainting affect the way the brush touches the canvas, how much paint I can put on it. I have to paint very, very thin right now. I have to paint very dry. Otherwise, if it's thick and wet, it fills up the holes. It gets very muddy very quick. So each painting now is very, very thinly painted. Every painting has a history. 
This one is 1970, and this is like more like a la prima painting that I was really wanted to do. I would try. I was doing 200 paintings a year at the time when I was doing this, and I was just knocking, trying to knock off a painting a day. If you look at the strokes here, they're just very quick strokes, and you can see there's not a whole lot of detail, I'm just hitting it and making it come out. I got a lightness. And then I have another piece in the show where I have four models painted on top of one another, a model, model once a week for a year. And then the next year, another person takes the same pose for four years. And they get their own texture because of that, because you know, you're really painting over top of a painting and a funny kind of texture comes out. So even a single painting done in a day has a history of so many hours. This happens to have a history of 12 years now, so far. It just started on this whole idea of continuing a painting. This idea that something has no ending, it's like a metaphor for painting itself, about the idea of learning and living. There's always something behind the next door, and, and your life changes and the painting changes. And my ideas of objectivity have changed, my ideas of subjectivity have changed. The great Western tradition asks you to look at the past, the present, the future, engage in critical dialogue and seek universality. And I started thinking, well, maybe I should start really seeking universality through subjectivity. The painting asks more and more, the more you paint into it. Instead of saying, you know, it's over, it just says, keep on going. Do you have one month a year that you decide to spend on this painting or you're constantly? I'm constantly painting on it and sometimes at the expense of all the things I want to do. It's like when I go in the studio, I take off my coat and I want to go to that painting right away. In order for me not to go to that painting, I have to control that. I have to tell myself, I don't want to go to the painting today. <laughs> you know, I have to do something else.